everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. This video is going to be all about one of my favorite topics in the makeup world. I'm just, you know, rolling my sleeves up here. Um, it's all about palettes, and I have recently tried, well, I've got a stack of six of them right in front of me. Prices on these range from, you know, the $30, $40 range, I believe, up to $85. So I know with palettes, a lot of times you're thinking, well, if I get this one, how will that compare to this other one that I'm thinking about? Due to their cost, I think comparison are really key, very helpful um, when it comes to reviewing palettes. So I thought it would be fun to just talk about these in one big chunk, and I'm gonna be going from my least favorite to my most favorite. So I'll show you some swatches and just kind of walk you through the different high points and low points of all of these different palettes. Um, one that was unfortunately a real disappointment to me, I wanted to love this palette, uh, mainly because of the amount of money I put in to buy this palette. It's the um, Lancome Audacity in Paris palette here and you can see packaging I think is adorable. I love this little design they've put on the front. You pop it open. It does come with a double-ended brush, one fluffy end, one flat end. The fluffy end is kind of huge for my eyes but whatevs. Um, big mirror which is always great. There are actually 16 shadows in here. You are getting a mix of all different warm and cool tones. I feel like they've put in several really workable highlight shades. You move into some mid-tones where you've got, you know, I love this kind of rosy brown and then um, you know warmer brown you've got that option really nice deep dark shades it's always great to have a matte brown and a matte black to work with in your palettes and there are some really brilliant um, shimmery shades as well and some of these um, you may be familiar with if you're a big Lancome shadow user I know Kitten Heel for example that's a shade I think I have in some other little Lancome palette there are some individually really pretty shades in here but as a whole I was kind of let down by the overall texture and pigmentation of everything. But you know, I'm thinking about my Urban Decay palettes, my Too Faced palettes, just, you know, the other palettes I'm looking at in the stack in front of me, and I think, you know, the work I've had to do to build up these shades, to get them to really stand out and be as vibrant as I hope they would be. I've used this palette a lot. I've gone deep and dark with it, and you can do like a nice smoky eye with this. It's not like it's the worst palette of life. I don't want to put it out there that way, but um, it is a pricey palette, and and for that cost, I would expect it to be at least as good as some of the other high-end palettes that I have. And it's kind of one of those situations where a lot of the shades are just kind of in that sort of dusty, not super pure color type of range. You know what I'm saying? Like this purple, for example, it's pretty. It's really pretty to look at like in the lineup of shadows, but it's just a very like dusty, muted, um, not pure purple. So when you put that on the eyes, you don't really get the satisfaction of, oh, I'm wearing purple today, you know? A lot of my looks seem to come out very neutral and a lot of them looking very similar, so not a big fan of this palette. Next, um, this is the Laura Geller The Delectables eyeshadow palette. This says delish, delish, delicious shades of nude. And I know there is another version of this palette that is more of a cool, smoky looking selection of shades, but this is what this one looks like. And I think just to look at this, it, it just does look yummy. It looks delectable. Um, if those were candies, I would eat them. There are some certain shades in here that I'm thinking, come to mama, you know, these are my colors. These right here, you know, it's like a sunrise, sunset type thing. And yeah, these babies up here, the greens. Laura Geller is of course really well known for her baked formulas in face products like Balance and Brighton, Bronze and Brighton, various highlights and things like that. So um, I have tried some of her baked eyeshadows. Some of them a lot of times come in like little duos, like about yay big. Um, but in this palette, I thought it was interesting that not only do you have some of those really metallic, uh, very shiny, shimmery shades that you expect to see in her baked format, but you also have some mattes like vanilla, uh, mushroom, hazelnut, mahogany. Those are all matte shades and they're very classic colors as well. So they're nice colors to have in a palette and mix them in with all of the really super shiny, hey, look at me type colors. And part of the thing with baked shadows is you can wear them dry or you can add a little bit of water to them, you know, a little Fix Plus or whatever, you know, makeup setting spray you like to use. You mix that in with these and then you can achieve an even more intense look. And I think before you invest in a lot of baked shadows, you should ask yourself, am I willing to take the time to do the extra step? There are some days when I'm getting ready when, yeah, I've got that extra time. I don't mind doing it. I like the finished look. But more often than not, 
it's just an extra little hassle, you know, especially when you look at other palettes and you see, okay, they can be intense and they don't need any water added to them. But as I show you swatches of this one, you'll see it all dry. Everything just swatched out dry, no primers. I don't ever swatch anything on top of certain primers in any of my videos. As you see them dry, I think they're pretty faint, really. And I think the matte shades are especially disappointing. Like, they're so light, and I've worn these on my eyes as well, of course, and it's just, it's not enough punch. They're very dry feeling to the touch. Now, when you look at the swatches with a little bit of, what did I use? I used the e.l.f. Uh, Makeup Mist and Set to dampen these, and you can see a major difference in the shimmery shades. Like, I think they look double as brilliant. The matte shades only seem to be helped slightly by that. So that's a little disappointing because I think for the palette to really work, you need the matte shades to be just as good as the shimmery shades so they can be worn in conjunction with one another, you know? A nice deep, dark, m good quality matte brown in the crease is what allows shades like Honey and Sunrise to really pop on the lids, let's say. It's not an awful palette by any means. I just wanted these shadows to be so good, just used dry. I think there's a really nice, very fall-like concept happening with this palette, but for me, I'm just not seeing it as a must-have. Now, these next four palettes, I really enjoy. Um, I'm impressed by them. I really am glad I have them, and one of them is actually a sequel palette to the original It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty Matte Palette. Now they have the Naturally Pretty Romantics, and it actually is a similar color. I've got right behind me here the original one, so you've got lighter pink and now deeper pink, but on the inside, Here's what we're working with. You know what strikes me first about this palette? I feel like there are a lot of pastels in here, matte pastels. When I first think of that combination, I think, are they gonna be just chalky and dusty because they're light shades and they're matte? I don't feel that way though about these. I think the color is super easy to work with and build up. You do have the Transforming Pearl in here, which is something you can use as like an accent shade. Maybe you only wanted a little glow like under the brow or around the inner corner. You've got that, or you can layer it underneath or on top of some of these matte shades. Another thing I like about this palette is the fact that there is a pistachio green shade in here. Uh, there are also some really pretty purpley tones, and for that reason, it reminds me of a matte version of my Too Faced Romantic Eye palette, because that is, it's such an unlikely shadow combo to pair greens and purples, but it's so pretty. And if your shadows are pigmented enough to really pop on your eyes, it won't look muddy. One small gripe about this, if you've already got this palette, there are some shades, I won't say they are exact, like they put in the exact same colors, but there are some shades that are really close in here. I'm talking about the shades called Noir in here and Mystery in this palette, um, the Deep Dark Browns, Java and Fate. You've got Midnight, which is a dark navy blue, and Trust in this palette. And I get that they're trying to keep this something that people will see and be like, yeah, that's wearable, that's something I can use. You know, they're not going to put totally off-the-wall colors in an IT Cosmetics matte palette. To me, I still think they're different enough, and I still think they're worth having, especially if you are a die-hard matte shadow fan, and you're tired of all of the matte palettes that come out that are so, so just neutral. It's like everybody who makes matte palettes thinks all people want are the nude shades. I think some people want some fun takes on mattes as well, and there are some of those in here. Um, the original palette, I think, is overall a little bit deeper with the tones, and you've got this really unique kind of warm sector down here that I love. Meanwhile, this palette, like I said, some more like pastel type colors that still really pop, and if you're a fan of purples or purple-ish type shades, there are some of those in this palette, there are some in this palette, and they each have their kind of own unique twist. If you swatch all of the purples from this palette and all of these in a lineup, you have the most beautiful range. So I could see this being a nice companion to the original or, you know, just used on its own. I think it's a great palette. This next one is one, I feel like I am speaking about this palette from a total makeup lover's perspective, a makeup collector's perspective, if you will, because I feel like there's that way of looking at things, and then there's the super practical way of looking at things. And from the very practical side, um, you might see this palette and be like, okay, I'm willing to seek out those kind of looks from drugstore 
store products and pull off that type of eye look from any number of other cheaper products. But from a collector standpoint, this is something that's kind of exciting to have. And I am talking about the MAC um, Warm Neutral 15 Color Eye Palette. This is one of those pre-put together MAC palettes. I remember getting this, talking about it in a haul video, I believe, and saying, you know, I'm not even sure if this is worth it. I dropped $85 on this thing. I feel like that's too much. But really, so many of you were saying in the comments section that that's actually a really good deal for something like this because the shadows are so great that are in here. And if I were to create this palette on my own, like buy an empty MAC palette and fill it with singles, I would have paid a lot more. So I see that, but then I also think $85, you know, like this is a fairly, you know, just neutral, normal, standard looking palette. Can't I get that kind of look from other things? I do think you can get that kind of look from other things. This is a palette that I enjoy by looking at the small details of what this is. Also, I find it worthwhile for me because I don't own very many MAC shadows at all. The amount that I have feels like a medium-sized Z palette, and I didn't already have any of these shades. So I'm very excited to have this and be able to try those shades. And there are just some really interesting things happening in here. For example, this shade down here, this is called Lemon Tart. I don't have anything like that. It's like a really soft, yellowy, um, buttery shade that is so pretty around the inner corner. Corner. It's like absolutely turning the lights on. I love that. Um, this is a really interesting kind of greenish khaki shade that I think is so, so pretty. Honey Lust and Amber Lights, um, these shades on my kind of goldeny brown eyes, I think is so pretty. The Dark 2 right up here, I use all the time. Like any look I do from this palette, I feel like I'm pulling in one of these two. And um, this one is Dark Brew. This one's Dance in the Dark. Love them. I've become a huge fan of Saddle. And I just got to say, these shades blend so nicely. They really are such good quality eyeshadows and it's just fun to have those shades that people know by name. I used this palette to create a look for a wedding I went to recently. I absolutely loved it. It was warm, bronzy. Some of these shades I really don't think I would have picked out myself, but I really, really love them. So pricey, yes, but am I enjoying it? Absolutely. Next palette is something I have really been enjoying and I know I've mentioned it at least a couple of times on this channel and I still wanted to work it into um, what I was talking about here, the content of this video, because you might wonder like, okay, she said she really likes that. How does that stack up with everything else? And this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills World Traveler Shadow Couture Palette. I really think this is for the person who likes their neutral looks but is ready to start bringing the pops of color because they're some really pretty pops of color in here. This shade called Metallic, beautiful yellowish green, um, a gorgeous pink in here. Azure is a really fun blue. It's not all just a glitter bomb type palette because you've got some really nice um, matte shades, soft peach, fudge, Morocco. Those shades are just money and you'll find yourself working them into all of the different looks you do. Love that there's a mirror included. Also love that there is a brush that I get a heck of a lot of use out of that is also put in here. One side it's kind of like a jumbo smudger brush. The other side is a really great, terrific blending brush. It's a lot of fun. It's probably the least expensive thing I've mentioned in this video, so great value. Love it. Now there's one more palette to talk about, guys, and it is right on par with this one, if not a hair above it, and it is the Too Faced Stardust by Vegas Ney palette slash collection because it's really a little collection that you get and I have been so impressed by this. I have heard raves about it on YouTube and before I even got it I thought yeah yeah really you know is it that great? I really adore this. Um, I think this is a very thoughtfully put together palette. I think you get really nicely sized shadows in here. And the selection of shades I feel like is right up my alley. This would be a great giftable thing because I think somebody would get this and be like, wow, this is special stuff. You open this up, this is magnetic. You've got Naomi, AKA Vegas Nay herself here. Pictures of some of the looks. And outside of this box comes a little tray and that tray is holding several like accessory products. You get a Too Faced Shadow Insurance and I'm always using a base with whatever eye look I do 
do, so it's great to have that in there. They give you a Better Than Sex mascara, which I think is an awesome bodybuilding, like really volumizing mascara. They also threw in this Too Faced Glamour Dust in Nude Beam, which I have not yet actually played with in any of my looks, and I don't want to tip it too far, but it's a pretty like soft beige, very, very shimmery, loose shadow. Also in there, another reason why I think this is fun to gift is because it comes with all these cards. Okay, I'm a dork, but this makes me think of like little baseball cards, you know, like makeup trading cards. They've got the look in, you know, not just a sketched out face chart style, but really like seeing a photograph and then step by step on the back of every card. I love it. And I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, yeah, I want to do that look. I want to do that look. A lot of times you'll get a palette and there will be some sort of instruction with it, but it's usually like really predictable and I don't always follow it. But with all these, I'm seeing them and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I love it. I'm with you. I want to do this. So I'm wearing this today and I did this look. This look is called Repost Rebel. And so I just went step by step and I very easily really recreated the look. Seriously, I love how it's basic. A little more shiny. Purples, thank you. Um, burgundy, yes please. Gold, absolutely. Does the palette need a black? Every palette needs a black. There are plenty of things in here that can give you that really natural, like quick out the door everyday look, but there are so many ways to spice a look up with this. This look is um, a lot of Sin City all over the lid. Uh, Follow Me and Pink Pearl are around the inner corner, but then it's kind of a transition shade. I've got Showgirl right up in here and Chandelier is the highlight. I've already used this palette probably five or six times and I still feel like I have only scratched the surface of the kinds of looks you can do. And I'm just loving, like I said, these little ideas. And it's not to take anything away from this Anastasia palette, but I just think the shadow quality is extremely good across the boards with every shade and just all the little extras. So that is my review on just a bunch of different palettes I've tried recently. We're on the verge of holiday palette time, one of my favorite times of the year, so definitely be on the lookout for a lot of new reviews to come. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today, and I will see you next time. Bye!